Hello, I am so excited that you're here to talk about an incredibly important topic that I want to dive into. But before we do that, I want to ask you a question. Do you want to sell your business? Okay, maybe the answer to that question is no. So let me frame it a different way. Do you ever want to go on a vacation? Do you ever want your phone not ringing off the hook on the weekends asking for you to step into your business? Do you want to go on a cruise where you don't have any access to any technology and your business still thrives? So if the answer to any of those questions other than selling your business is the answer, then today is for you. Because having time away from our businesses is as important as working in our businesses, on our businesses, and all the things. But we can learn so many things from people who successfully sell their businesses so that we can thrive in our businesses without actually being in our businesses. What? I know, right? So my name is Emily Hawkins. I am the founder of Leadership Operating System. I own a career and life coaching business, and I spent 15 years in the corporate world streamlining processes for productive results. I stood up supply chains all over the world without me being a part of it, meaning I did it, and then I left, and the businesses still ran and thrived and all the things. Well, I took that knowledge and I opened my own business and have been able to seamlessly run my time, my team through scaling and millions of dollars, which is really exciting. So I want to unlock all those secrets for you. And that is exactly what we do in our times together every single week. But today in particular, I want to talk about why you want to think about your business as something you want to sell. So I don't want you to sell your business. I don't want to sell my business. I see myself doing the work that I'm doing for the rest of my life. It is my purpose. It is my passion. It is what I believe I was put on this earth to do. That doesn't mean that I am a part of every single piece of that. So I'm a big analogy person. I love a good analogy. And the only thing I could liken this to was a Christmas tree. So have you seen this? I keep pointing the wrong direction. I'm really bad about that. Have you seen this meme? It cracks me up every time. So think of your business. If you are selling and you're really, really great at selling, there's a good chance that the front of your Christmas tree looks like this. It may even look fancier, right? It is beautiful, but the back of your tree, meaning the fulfillment part, the part that involves you putting pieces and parts into place, serving your customers, uh, getting payments from your customers, making sure that all the back end things are working, seeing, loving, hearing your people, right? And maybe even a thing called repeat business. Well, it might look like that. And if this doesn't ring true with you, I thought this one was even funnier. So maybe the front of your business looks like Taylor Swift, but the back looks like Dog the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> I know when I made my very, very first sell ever as a business owner, I was totally like, I am Taylor Swift all the way. I am confident in what I'm selling. I got buyers. And then when it came to the back end, and this again was when I first started out, I didn't even know how to collect payments. Like I was trying to figure everything out, right? And when I did, I had to come up with all these like rinky dink ways that were fine in the moment, but they weren't long-term solutions. Now, when you are starting out and it is your first sale, you were so excited. Operate this way. That is just fine. I totally get it. But when you are seasoned, and you are getting repeat business, if you continue to operate like this, your business will fall apart. So I want you to operate as if someone sees what you're doing and they're attracted to it so much that they want to buy it. What? Wouldn't that be amazing? And I don't mean that they would actually buy your business, but that other people are so interested that your business is valuable to them. So what does that even mean? How do you know if your business can thrive without you personally. Because that 
is when you're not running this way, right? You're Taylor Swift all the way around. You're the Christmas tree that's beautiful all the way around, like those revolving trees. Have you ever seen those? I will never own one of those. The back of my Christmas tree, my actual Christmas tree, always looks like Dog the Bounty Hunter. But <laughs> my business does not. It could totally be one of those revolving Christmas trees. So what are the things that must be true for your business to scale or for it to thrive without you personally being the bottleneck? Because there's a really good chance that right now you don't realize that your business doesn't really thrive without you, right? Uh, so, and you know this, when you go on vacation and you come home and you have 10,000 messages, 100 uh, emails to get through, your phone is blowing up while you're on trips because everyone needs you, right? That's because you're running like dog the bounty hunter on the back end. Let's not do that anymore. So I'm going to run through with you exactly what you need to have in place in order for your business to thrive without you. Okay. So let's start with the first thing. Your business is teachable. So I know I've worked with many people who are like, it's so complex. This is very complex. If your business is very complex, then you're never really going to be able to get help, right? So if it's too hard for you to build out a diagram back in the napkin of how your business works, how you fulfill things with people, so that anyone could do this, that's scary. So your business must be teachable. And I mean, if an owner was taking it over, they would know seamlessly how this works. Think about for a minute, if you were to take on a franchise, how are businesses able to franchise? They're teachable, right? They're like, we have a process and this is how we serve our customers. This is how we deliver our service, our product, whatever it is, right? It's teachable. So I want you to remember that if something is teachable, then that means there is a process, a repeatable process on the back end making that happen. And it doesn't matter if it's a product or service. And we're going to talk about this too in the very next one. So the product is valuable out of the box. Now, what does this mean in terms of out of the box? So product and out of the box. I have both of these air quoted. What does that mean? Okay, first and foremost, if you are selling a service, I mow lawns for a living. I don't. You would never want me to do that. But let's for a second pretend that I mow lawns for a living. Well, technically that's a service, right? That's not a product, but it could be a product. So when I say product, your product needs to be something that is repeatable, standardized, and repeatable. So it is a process going back to that original thing, right? So if you were to mow lawns, you have a specific process that everyone that works for you falls to which means it's valuable out of the box. So I'm going to call Fred, my neighbor, and I say, I can mow your yard. And he's like, oh, well, could you also do X, Y, and Z? Nope. All I do is mow your yard. And I do a bang up job at it. I kill that. I do so well at it. Out of the box means it works out of the box. So think about when you go to the store and you buy a product. It doesn't matter what it is. A jar of jelly is a great example, right? When you buy that jar of jelly, you don't come home and say, I wish it was peanut butter. You're like, I know it's jelly. I'm going to use it as jelly. It's going to work for me, whether it be on a peanut butter jelly sandwich, whether it be on toast, whether it be on a bagel. I can use this out of the box. I'm not looking for somebody to customize it for me, right? I can use this for my business or my tummy if you like jelly. I personally love jelly. Um, and you're not looking for a specific customization. Companies that get in trouble here are the service-based businesses that get what I call scarcity mode. And scarcity mode is like, here's what we sell. We sell this service where we do marketing for you. And then the person that they're speaking to is like, oh, it'd be really great if you also did 
creative, if you also wrote all of our copy, if you also, um, you know, knew where we could advertise and you actually did the brokering of all the advertising. I'm making all this up. But all of a sudden, the service that you wanted to offer, the out of the box is no longer out of the box, right? Because you're like bending over backwards and you're like, oh yeah, we could do that. We could do that. We could do that. I can tell you that the first few sales you have will not go this way at all, right? You are trying to figure out what that product is and what that out of the box global solution is. Meaning, what gets you the biggest bang for your buck? What serves the most people with exactly what you offer without any sort of customizations? We're not going to customize anything. We are going to give you this out of the box service, solution, whatever it might be. And a really great thing when this happens is you can re you can actually have repeat buying. So if you have repeat buyers, ooh, your business is fire. That's what I'm saying here. This could be, if you're in the digital world, this could be a membership. This could be where you're asking people every month, every year to re-up their membership. A great uh, example of this is Netflix. Pretty much all of us have it, right? Well, they are repeat buying opportunities every single month. Also, it's out of the box, right? So what you get is what you get. It's customizable. It's kind of learning as you go, but it's not like, oh, Emily, you run a business, so we are giving you the business package of Netflix. No, right? There are different levels of membership, but it's they're selling the same thing. It's out of the box, right? And then every month, it requires you to pay a fee. Razor blades, another great one. Groceries, another great one. Repeat buying, right? Um, tires, uh, cars, servicing of your cars, dental cleanings. Think about all the repeat services that you have at your fingertips. It could even be something as simple as a checkup. I mean, think about the doctor, an annual checkup. Um, I don't think that's truly in place for the doctor to make money. I think it's in place for our health. But that's the other thing is you've got to make it valuable to the customer, right? So what is the repeat buying that you can offer people so that you don't have a one and done? You have a lifetime customer that continuously can come back to you so that when you are actually grabbing customers, you're not having to then go out and grab more customers and then more customers. You're able to actually keep serving the people that you bring in in the first place and they continue to invest in your products and services. So there are literal services like I was talking about um, with you know dental cleanings, car services, car maintenance, and then there's the product-based business, right? If you're eye creams or you know, um, any sort of perishable thing like that. I think of Amazon subscribe and save as a great example. It's something I use every month. Um, and every month my, my feelings and hopes are dashed when I'm excited that I got a giant package in the mail from Amazon only to open it up and see that it's tied and toilet paper, but that's a whole other story. So let's talk about this next piece that is so hard for all of us to do. You do one thing exceptionally well. Now, I alluded to this a little bit earlier because when you productize, is what we're going to call it, I think I just made up that word, when you productize what it is that you do in your business, you are able to do one thing exceptionally well. Exceptionally well. Now, businesses that are like, you know what we do? We offer this and we offer this and we offer this and we offer this. Okay, that's great. But where is your focus? And where your focus goes is where your business grows. So if you have four different products, if you have five different offerings, if you have five different services, you're going to be spread one fifth in each of those, right? And one fifth of your, of your focus isn't so great. So let's take it to even a half, right? So now we're at 2.5, you know, and a, and a fifth, you know, I'm, I'm so bad with fractions. 
Um, so you're spending 50% of your time in these buckets, right? Still, you're focused on 50%. Mm, if you go one, you go one, and you go deep, gold, absolute positive gold. Go deep on one thing. I would love to know in the comments what your trepidation is about this specific thing. What I hear from most businesses is that we can't do that because we will lose buyers. Yes, you will, but you will gain buyers as well. And that's the piece that we miss out on. So yes, you will lose buyers in one category, right? Because you have these five things, right? You're going to lose buyers in four of the categories. But when you become exceptionally great at one thing and you focus on one thing and you put your heart and soul into that one thing, you will far exceed what you were doing in four of those categories and you will 10, 20 X the business in the one thing that you were exceptional at. Now, how do you know what you're exceptional at? Well, after this call, I want you to reach out to customers that you love and ask what their favorite thing is that you do. What was the thing that moved their business, moved their car service, moved their whatever it is, their pool service forward? What was the thing that they loved most? Why have they stayed with you? What is the thing that you do better than anyone else? What is the thing that they brag to their friends about and pass your name and number along? Why? Why do they do that? That is the thing that you do exceptionally well, and that is the thing you go deep on, my friend. Now the next one, oh, we're going to talk money. And money makes people nervous, but I like talking about money because so many people don't want to talk about it. Or we talk about the wrong thing. We talk about gross revenue, which well, I'm just going to say that's gross. And it's gross because it's not real. It's like monopoly money in my mind. What I would rather talk about is net and positive cash flow. So what is positive cash flow? Well, I am sure that you have worked with businesses that operate this way. How do I know? Because there's a good chance that you have at some point in your life paid a carpenter to come fix something in your home, a repairman to fix something uh, that took several days. Maybe you did a restoration in your home, a renovation. Maybe you built a house. Whatever you did, or we did a few years ago, we, we had our house painted on the inside. Well, what great business owners know is that they want you, the client, the customer, to fund the business. And the best way to fund the business is one of two options pay fully upfront for services. That way, me as the business owner can use your funds to operate and serve you while I'm doing the work for you or with you. So a painter is a great example, right? So the painter that we use said we need, they needed half down. And the reason they needed half down is because they needed to go buy the paint. They're not going to go buy the paint with their own money. That's bad business. They needed our investment in our service to pay for the paint so that they could get started on what they were doing and then at the end get the rest of the payment. Now, I will tell you, as somebody who does coaching, because it is my time, all payments are up front. So all payments are up front because I don't know how fast or how slow our services are going to go when I do one-on-one -on -one coaching especially. Uh, in group models, that's very different. I have a very rigid and standardized process there. But at the same time, I want to make sure that I have alleviated myself from needing to go find other work while I am serving and honoring your time. And the best way for me to not be selling while I'm serving you is for you to pay me for that time up front. It is a great business model, and it is called positive cash flow. Positive cash flow is the most beautiful thing that will make your business profitable. If you are not running on positive cash flow, you're saying, oh, pay me when you can. It's fine. That is dangerous. No one will buy your business. The people that you employ will not be able to get paid. It will put you in a scarcity mindset 
that will take you away from actually serving your people and the people that are right in front of you and it'll put you in the, we've got to find money somewhere else. And that's just not good business. So positive cash flow is a beautiful thing. Now, the final one, you are not doing the selling. You have a selling a sales team or someone else doing the selling for you. This is a beautiful thing. This means you can go on that two-week cruise and see sales continue to come through because somebody else is selling the tires, the pool service, the pool maintenance, the products and services that you offer. Someone else understands because your business is teachable. Your business is a product that is easy to explain and anyone can do it. It will create repeat buying. And the reason somebody can sell it so well is because you have taught them the one thing that your company does exceptionally well. If you are forcing salespeople to learn 17 different products, 70 different services, they are not going to be great at selling. If you have one teachable process that you do exceptionally well, that hopefully also brings in repeat buyers, then you, my friend, will have positive cash flow and you will have a sales staff that you can easily train with the right processes in place. Now, I wanted to leave a few minutes for questions. If you have questions, by all means, throw them in the chat. I would love, love, love to see them. And I also want to remind you that we do all of this inside of the leadership operating system. So inside this program, I teach you exactly how to do all these things in a very short period of time so that you can actually grow a business that thrives without you being there. How amazing is that? There are several pieces to this. It's a four-phase process that actually within a couple hours a week over the course of the 90 days that we're together, it all comes together. And now, if you are interested in that, I would love for you to type shift, the word S-H-I-F-T, in the chat. And I would love to private message you, work with you, and we can jump on the phone together, talk about your specific needs. And I look forward to seeing you on the other side. I hope that you have a wonderful day.